Hello, and welcome to another summation of the casserole of mess that is season six of Love is Blind. I realize that my video is late and we've got the reunion that's airing in like two days and thankful to, or thank you to the lovely internet sleuths of the world, a lot of us, and the trailer, a lot of us already know what's gonna happen at the reunion. We know that Sarah Ann is there and she's sitting with Jeremy and she's got her hand all on his knee. We know that AD and Clay are most likely still together. And we know that Anna and Johnny Appleseed, we know that they got married. And thank you to social media also for pointing out that Chelsea and Jimmy Johnny might still be together. So we know that, oh, and we know that Laura is not coming to the reunion. So we know a couple different things about this season and how it really wrapped up already. But, but before we get there, I did wanna give my review of the last few episodes. Specifically, specifically I'm gonna be talking about in this video, my review of episode 10. What happened at the altar? I think it was episode 10, maybe episode 11, I don't know. But I'm gonna specifically be talking about their wedding days. Before we get to the altar though, I do wanna go back a little bit to the episode where they were all at the docks. They were all doing the jet ski thing and we had Sarah Ann show up. And I just wanna say the only thing I wanna say about this, the only thing, well actually I wanna say a couple things. Okay, I wanna say a couple things. Um, the first thing I wanna say is that Sarah Ann is the most perplexing reality TV character that I've run across in a long time. I don't watch a lot of reality TV. I'm not a housewives person. I'm not a, what, below deck person. I'm not a Love Island person. Like I don't watch a lot of it at all. And so I'm not used to, I haven't seen a lot of personalities, but Sarah Ann 100% is one of the most interesting, at least from Love is Blind, because I think it's the first time that we have somebody that we have somebody coming off this show who is just so non-remorseful for anything that she might have done that might have hurt or harmed another character in any way. If you'd been watching her social media after these episodes first started to air, then especially after we found out that he ain't really go home after he sat with that girl, sat with her in the lost and found parking lot, but that he went to her house and he was there for five hours and they both swear nothing happened. If you've been looking at her social media, you know that this girl has been standing 10 toes down on anything that she did while she was on that set, while she was in that, what, whatever she did. She went so far as to make speeches talking about how it's so important in life to stand up for what you believe in and to be a hundred percent. Hey everyone, happy Saturday. I am out right now getting ready to run some errands and do a couple returns. And I really just wanted to hop on here before that and put a message out into the world. I wanted to start by saying that I'm so, I, I see all the comments, the good, the bad, the ugly, like I had mentioned before. And for everyone that is, you know, supporting me and letting me know like, hey, like, you know, I'm rooting for you. I love you, thank you. It's really awesome to see that there are people in the world that are some true fighters that will stand up for what they believe in and they understand that to the fullest, it's amazing. And y'all, that's exactly what this message is about. I wanted to say that if you truly believe in something with your whole heart, you should always stand up for what you believe in and you should never let anybody tell you that you're wrong, you shouldn't, you can't, enough to make you give up. It takes a tremendous amount of strength to follow your heart and and really lean into what you're feeling. Take it from me, I would know. And I can't speak for anybody else, but I can speak for myself. And one thing about me, I'm always gonna stand up for what I believe in. I'm always gonna listen to my heart and I'm not gonna give up on something that I feel strongly about. We are not saving face over here. Buck a fake smile, stand up for what you believe in and that's my message. Percent Making herself sound like she was going to war in these episodes or she was fighting for liberation of a disenfranchised people. I don't know, but I have just never run into any character who stood so hard behind their actions and just had no remorse whatsoever and treated everything like it was a joke the way she has. Um, and I think the, uh, the scene where she shows up at the dock and a lot of people have talked about this, but you know, I'm gonna go ahead and weigh in. The jet skis were diabolical. I mean, they come in and, you know, AD tells her, hey, you know, yeah, we get it. 
you you may have still felt a connection to him, but you reached out to him after you know he was already engaged. And uh, no, actually, I'm gonna talk about that real quick. To me, the onus is on the person that's engaged. I'm with Laura whenever Laura pointed out to her parents in a couple episodes before, when Sarah Ann messaged him, he liked it. He did a double heart. As somebody who has made the first move, as somebody who slid in the DMs, if a dude is not feeling you, if he don't care about you, number one, you can leave it as unread. You absolutely can. And number two, you can, um, you can hit a let, you don't have to, you don't have to respond at all. You can just leave it there. Or you can write, okay, or thanks for this, but I'm, ha it's just something. Unfortunately for women, and I think just in general, emojis, emoticons, whatever, they do send a message about how you feel about the message, about the person sending a message, and choosing the right one, or the one that you choose, needs to be the right one and make sure it conveys the right message. If you hearted it, after somebody sent you a message letting you know that they were still here and still interested in you when you were already engaged, in my mind, you planted a seed in their mind that you were still interested. I don't care what feelings he might've still had for her. If he was not interested, if he, if that door wasn't still open for him, if he was 100% committed to Laura, which we know he wasn't, he wouldn't have did no heart. He wouldn't have. He would have ignored the message. He would have left it unread. He would have, there's so many other courses of action he could have taken. But from the beginning, Jeremy had not really decided on Laura. And I think, I, I wonder why he even showed her the message, like to give her fuel for that. And I, I think it's because he knows he does some shady stuff, but he wants it to, he wants us to think, or he wants the people in his life to think, well, I'm a good guy, I did this. Well, I'm a good guy, I did this. But you're not a good guy, you're not. Her sending that message, I personally don't think it was the worst thing in the world, sorry. Um, she said what she said, hey, we were in the pods, it was emotional, we connected. I know you left with somebody else. If anything changes, for the time being, I'm here. The onus of how to respond was on him. I felt like she got a lot of shit because women have this thing about girl code and this and that, but if we're honest, a lot of us have been in situations before where we might have been dating a guy and then maybe we fell out of touch with him or something and we decide to send him a message. Hey, how are you? You know, whatever. And we find out that he's in a relationship. Oh, damn. Okay, well, if anything changes, you know, I'm here. Now, again, if he's engaged, it's different. But I want to say this. I want to say this. Can we really expect, based on the absolute clownery that Love is Blind is, can we really expect people to take those engagements seriously? Would you? Would you take an engagement made on Love is Blind as seriously as you would one in the real world? I don't know if I would. I don't think they should be getting engaged after they leave those pods. I don't think they should be getting married. I think it should be Love is Blind so that you can go on dates. Something that has stuck out to me just ridiculously throughout this entire season is that a lot of these people just have plain old not been in good relationships in their lives. Like a lot of these people just don't know what it's like to be loved in general. And so they sign up for a show like this. And <laughs> I, I say that because I recognize some of their actions and some of their behaviors, especially with AD. Oh my God, I'm gonna get into her in a second. But I recognize it as something that I also fight with and deal with as somebody who also has not had the pleasure of knowing a really great relationship. And I think when you haven't known that, you would sign up for and do some clownery like that show. But um, in general, I don't think that anybody should leave the pods and agree to get married. I think a lot of those people needed to just leave the pods and be allowed to date for up to a year before they decide on doing anything else. Saying that to say this, I 100% understand where Sarah Ann was coming from sending him the message. I think it was wrong for Jeremy to respond with a heart, and I think it was wrong for Jeremy to show Laura. I think Jeremy is a spineless shit stirrer, and he put both women in a bad position. He's a, he's a bad man. In fact, there is an ex of his who came out, and she basically said that their relationship had some domestic violence issues. There were, you know, she was like, it's time for me to spill my Jeremy tea. You know, uh, who who the F was I engaged to? Part one, right? Um, she's over on TikTok. It's it's not hard to find her. 
I don't remember who, who she is or what her name is, but she definitely started talking about him and she was like, I have proof. And I think people were interested, but I, I don't know. My point is, is that he has a history probably of not being the greatest boyfriend. And that's all he was doing in this situation. And I feel like he set both women up to fail, but Sarah Ann refuses to fail. She refuses to look like the weaker party. And it's incredible to me. I've never seen anything like it. Like, I, I, I've just, I've never seen anything like it. And you know, you know, I tried to figure out this girl's birth chart. I was like, her behavior, she's giving me Leo Moon. She's giving me Sag Mercury. She's giving me fire energy. The way she was coming on social media talking about some, you know, I'm proud to be a home wrecker. Cause at least I know I'm free. Like just so proud of herself. So loud and proud and wrong. Oh my God. Because here's the thing, it's not wrong to it to initially contact, like right when you get out of the pods to say, hey, if anything changes, I'm here. Because you know that shit be changing on Love is Blind. I mean, let's be for real, stuff changes on this show all the time. However, once you see that he really in this engagement, he's really in this experiment, uh, and he runs up to you at the bar and talks to me, you don't need to do no five hours with him. You know, that's unjustifiable, I'm sorry. That's when you, that that's when, that to me, that's when she crossed the line. Wait, sending him a message right at the beginning when we get out of the pods, nah. But having a long talk with him at the bar when she knows his fiance is at home, okay, uh, uh, mm -mm, uh, uh, and then showing up to the to the barbecue, like she ain't do nothing. I ain't do nothing. What's wrong? I don't understand. Why are people mad at me, girl? And then getting on the, the, the jet skis and laughing like a hyena from Lion King when Laura's over there crying and she just got embarrassed, like. Where is your soul, okay? But Sarah Ann is so proud of herself and I was trying to figure out what in the world are this girl's zodiac placements and I couldn't have been any more wrong. And when I tell you, you astrology people out there, when I tell you what I found, and I might be wrong, I might not have the right birth year, but this girl is Scorpio Sun, Scorpio uh, Mercury, Scorpio Venus, Capricorn Moon, and you running your mouth like this? And you acting like this? And the only reason why I say that is because, again, we, we can only take astrology so far, right? When we're looking at a person. But the only reason why I say that is because Scorpios are known for being, for number one, so loyal. Loyal. Number two, secret. Keep a secret. Shh. And number three, like a Capricorn moon, very practical, very pragmatic, and a, a, a little bit guarded. All this talking, you doing all this talking? I bet she has a fire rising. Anyway, Laura, Sarah Ann has perplexed me and I've now talked about her for 10 minutes. Uh, so we're gonna see her on the reunion. She's gonna piss me off. I can just tell she's gonna piss me off on that reunion, but we will see. All right, other things that happened when they met about the docs that were interesting to me. Um, we know that Jimmy Johnny finally met Jessica and <sighs> Once again, we had a man who did not need to be engaged. He did not take those engagements seriously. And for him to tell that woman, you're still one of my top choices. You're still my top choice or whatever he told her. I was like, boy, mm. And then you wanna get mad at Chelsea when she drives herself insane over the insecurities that, or basically over her very real prediction or feeling that you're just not that into her. And you out here saying stuff like that. I felt Jessica handled herself really well. It didn't look like she was going to when they showed us the preview. It looked like she might be on some Sarah Ann BS, but she wasn't. I felt like she handled herself really well. She let him know, hey, you know, we had a good connection um, and you guys look great and good. And I felt like outside of him saying that, they both handled themselves really well. Like he gave her a hug. He acknowledged that, yeah, she is hot, which we all knew he was gonna need you know, a major, a major lobotomy once she finally revealed herself to him. So we all knew, like, once he sees her, he's gonna be, I, I, you know, I mean, he's uh, the same way that Chelsea, when she saw Trevor, she was like, well, damn. <laughs> That's what we knew was gonna happen when Jimmy Johnny saw Jessica. But I feel like they handled it diplomatically. Like, hey, well, I'm here with her, we're together, but you know, it is what it is. I also was right about him when it came to her. He said, you terrify me. What did I tell you? He picked Chelsea because in the pods, she seemed like the easier choice. And that's, that's what they're always telling us as women. Fake it till you make it. Hide the crazy. Don't let them know how 
weird or how quirky or whatever you really are, wait until he's invested and then let all of that out. Because we know that men are not, most men are not going to walk into an emotional challenge. They're just not gonna do it. And things like expressing your love through long letters, which yeah, <laughs> there's a story top on my channel right now where I talk about how one of the very first boys that I had a crush on when I was in elementary school, I wrote him this very long letter and uh, he took it and he shoved it in the back of his desk and he had he kept a really messy desk. The teacher dumped his desk out one day, found my letter and I think it was like two pages long. I was 10, what, what emotions did I have? But I've always had big emotions. Anyway, so she read the letter to the class and then uh, went and read it to all of the teachers. When I tell you I was so embarrassed, I'm still embarrassed. It's been 30 years and I'm still embarrassed. So I learned then though, or I, I guess I never learned really, but over the course of my life, I have learned that women in general and especially certain, certain people, uh, we have these big emotions and the easiest way to turn a man clean off is to show that side of ourselves too soon and to express it the wrong way. Now, uh, uh, by the same token, men also have big emotions. So it's really about just finding someone who, you know the energy you're coming with, he's coming to you with the same energy. But something I noticed over and over and over again in this show is, women and men are just made so differently. Um, and, and a lot of the things these characters struggle with or these cast members struggle with when it comes to their relationships with, with each other, are things that women and men have been struggling with since the dawn of time. And one of those things is emotional incompatibility, uh, whether it's how deep you feel it, how you choose to express it, whatever. Um, I'm, I'm noticing that a lot. I noticed it with Jessica and uh, Jimmy Johnny when they were in the pods. And I noticed it out of the pods with Clay and AD. Like there's just this, I'm feeling this so deeply, where are your feelings? And so that is something that I was, I actually wrote down in my notes while I was watching why did God make our brains so differently? Like we're so different when it comes to that. But anyway, um, Jessica was not willing to play cool girl in the pods though. She was like, these are my feelings. This is who I am. If you're gonna be with me, then you're gonna be with all of me. And that was too much for him. And so I appreciated the fact that he admitted it, like you terrify me. That's 100% why I decided to walk away from you. I, cause, cause I was right. Listen, I, I know, I know that, I, I know it cause I've been there. Okay, um, I thought they handled it really well, and I uh, I was I was proud of them, and uh, I was kind of proud of him until I think this was the episode where he went back home and Chelsea lost her mind because she found out that he was out at a bar, and he was with a friend that he'd like slept with in the past, and I always say this um, with men and with men and women friendships. Uh, male, female, platonic friendship. It's either because they are related by family. So like, let's say um, I'm hanging out with a guy and people are like, oh, are you dating him? No, he's my uncle, you know? Um, his, uh, his mom is my mom's sister and she had him late in life or something like that. That's not a situation for my life, but that's something I've seen. Uh, they're, so they're family, your, your uncle, your cousin, your nephew, um, your god brother, uh, your, your brother-in-law, whatever, right? Um, or, or nine times out of 10, and I've seen this a lot, especially when it's heterosexual, like I said, male and female relationships, y'all done either dated or he wants to date you. That's, that's, that's why he's around. Um, in a story I told in one of my earlier videos, I talked about how when I was in high school, there was a guy that was uh, very loud in my debate class one day, and he was talking about why he befriends women. And he basically said, I'm not friends with any woman unless she's hot. I'm friends with girls I wanna date and that is it. I do not keep girls around me unless I hope that I'll be able to date them. And I was so heartbroken because one of the things I noticed whenever I got into high school was I didn't have any male friends. Like I didn't have guys, you know, I grew up watching high school movies, you know, grew up watching Saved by the Bell, whatever. And I thought, you know, like I'll have this friend group in it. But if you even think about a show like Saved by the Bell, they're all dating each other, you know? So um, whenever a male and female are like, and they're both heterosexual, and they say they're in the, a, a platonic friendship, I always kind of raise an eyebrow. I'm always like, hmm, okay. Because I know from my life, when, I am, when I've known women who have a lot of male friends, 
a lot of times they have dated them. If, if it's not family, if it's not family, you dated him or he wants to date you. And so it's the, the water's always murky there. Now I realize you out there, you might've had a different experience. You might have, you might be a woman who has a best guy friend. You might be a man who has a best friend who's a girl. You are in a small percentage. I do think men and women can be friends, but it takes very special people to do that without crossing that line. Or, or, and I had a guy tell me this one time, there has to be absolutely no attraction um, on, on either one or both parties. One time a guy told me, oh, I could be friends with you. He, he was saying, I don't just keep women friends. And this was years later, years after high school. And he goes, I mean, I could be friends with you, no problem. Like we can hang out, it's fine. Cause you know, you're you. But, and I was like, oh, okay. So unless there's absolutely no attraction, but a lot of times that's what even brings people. If people have no other reason to be talking to each other, they don't, they don't work together. They don't have, a lot of things that brings them together is, oh, we swiped on a dating app and it didn't work out, but now we're friends. But that friction is still there. That energy is still there. So when she found that out about him and his female friend, I was like, well, duh, duh. Now the fact that they still hang out, that I'm sorry, that would probably bother me too if I was not completely convinced that he was in love with me, which I don't think that Chelsea is. Um, the way she screams and yells at him, uh, to me, it's abusive. To me, it is. it shows she has a complete lack of awareness uh, when it comes to emotional boundaries. And to me, um, that's when he should have broken up with her. So let's go ahead and go to the next episode, the weddings episode. Hold on, first of all, let's let's go back because uh, I'm, I'm squishing all these together because I just want to get to the weddings. I just want to talk about that. Let's talk about the episode where uh, AD goes and all the girls go to like pick out their wedding dresses. So I was not really a fan of anyone's dress. I thought AD's dress was lazy. She has a beautiful body and I feel like that would, like her body's the masterpiece so she could have worn a potato chip bag down the aisle and been fine. But I was still like, we can't get nothing else. We can't get no, 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 I don't know, no lace, no cute little, I'm not a seamstress, I don't know things. We can't get nothing else on this dress. Like that's it, that's all we get. I thought her dress was lazy. I mean, it looks great on her, but like anything would. And then I don't want really to talk about any of the other girls. I want to talk about Clay's friends, okay? Clay's friends. The black men like that are my Roman empire, honestly. I just have to say, like I have never been in a, I don't even know what I would do. You understand me? If I was in a room, never in my life, never in my life. Like one of them, Josh, Jay, Josh. Yeah, I went looking for him. I went hunting for him. Couldn't find him. I didn't work that hard. I don't want to hurt my feelings. Okay. Because uh, I know my limits. I know my limits. But I was like, God damn, you know, I I'm thinking, I'm thinking like Sarah Ann. Hell, if something don't work out with Clay, maybe one of them might have something to some to offer, but no, I think uh, like attracts like, and the things that he was saying about his friends, like, oh, this guy right here, he the, the one I was attracted to, this guy right here, he got me started talking to girls. You know, I was like, oh, he ain't, he ain't shit. <laughs> but uh, my God, they were beautiful. So I'm gonna go back to Amy when she met up with her dad. And I wanna say Amy consistently throughout her entire journey on this show, I've been asking the question, what prayer did her parents pray? And like, what did they do prior to praying that prayer? Like who, who are this girl's parents? Because it just feels like a sense of protection is over her. Like the guy she met reminds me of guys I grew up with and you just knew when it came to their lives, everything was gonna be all right. When I was looking at Amy and listening to how her father was talking to her and looking at that relationship they have, I was like, this is beautiful. I can relate. I have a similar relationship to my dad, but who is this man? Because whoever he prayed for, for his daughter to meet, whoever, their, their relationship just stands out to me as being one of the, one of the lucky, luckiest, excuse me, one of the most protected. And that man really loves her because as we know by now, he went all the way to the altar. These, 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 they never had sex. It's just very rare to find a couple who can do that, a man who's actually willing to do that, men who come from family. I mean, it's just very, it's a very, it's something I observed growing up. I watched these guys pair up with these girls and this like suburban dream. 
And it just felt so far away. And so when I look at Amy and Johnny, I'm just like, I just, I feel like she, she really got the best, she got the best deal overall. And that's, that's what I'll say about that. And so watching her interact with her father was, was beautiful. Um, watching AD interact with her mother. I love AD's mom. I love Clay's mom. Um, yeah, watching AD interact with her mother was, was beautiful. I will say about AD's mom, I want to know what her dad looked like. I know her dad passed away, but AD don't look nothing like that woman. When they say, when they be like, uh, you know, you see a baby and people will say, oh my God, girl, did your jeans even try? Or was the daddy in the room when you made this baby? Damn, you look just like your mama. AD must look just like her daddy because she don't look nothing like her mama. Nothing. So I would have, I would have liked to have seen a picture of him, maybe. But, um, you know, he did pass away. So that was unlikely. But, uh, yeah, I think I covered everything before we get to the weddings episode. Um, and if this seems like word soup and word casserole, it is, it's, it's a lot. I think these episodes were like a month ago. So I'm trying to like remember and pull from memory. Um, I did take notes at the time, but then, you know, life happens. So I didn't get a chance to record, but let's move on. Let's get to the weddings. So we start off the weddings episode, as you know, with Chelsea and Jimmy Johnny having a conversation. And he's asking her, well, how do you feel? Do you feel we can get married? Like, is that how you feel? I don't, I don't really know. And she says, well, based on today, yes. And then that fool turns around and says, that's nice you said that. I say no. And I was like, why he set her up like that? Why he let her have, like, why did he do that? Why did he do that? And I have to remember that the show needs its moments. And so the producers probably met with him and were like, well, we, you have an option. We can shoot this last date or um, we can, uh, you know, we can cut it here. What do you want to do? Maybe they gave him a choice. I don't know. But I can't understand why he took her to the amusement park, why they skipped around and laughed and rode all them roller coasters, only for him to sit that girl down and be like, you want to still marry me? <laughs> well, I don't want you. What? Where, what? What sense does that make? So uh, that's, that's mean. However, I do agree with his reasonings. I think that, like I said, um, she's, she's, she's verbally abusive, in my opinion. She is way too intense when she's like going at him and scre screaming at him, and he's not returning that energy to her, and it's unfair to him. And I'm not saying he should return that energy to her, but if he did, they would be in a straight up abusive relationship. Like it would just be like, somebody call the cops. So from that point in general, he should not marry her. Secondly, you know, I talked a little bit a while ago about Sarah Ann and what her zodiac signs actually were, which surprised the hell out of me. Uh, Jimmy, I think is a Scorpio too. And he said to this woman, you broke my trust by basically infringing on my privacy. I asked you to keep that off camera and you didn't. And she's like, well, so what? I can say what I want. These are my feelings. I'm allowed to. I will tell you this. And this is why I was surprised with Sarah Ann. I think like every Zodiac sign has a absolutely not. You cannot. And with Scorpios, it's privacy. Absolutely not. You, my secrets, my privacy, don't you dare. And so if they tell you a secret and you run your mouth, especially on camera, on national TV, especially about the sex life, something super pro. No, that's 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 enough. We good. We good. And the fact that she kept invalidating that. Oh, who cares about your little love triangle, girl? And I loved that he was like, you know, and maybe a little bit too much pr uh, protecting that other girl, but that's fine. He was like, you know, what does it say about other guys she might get involved with? Now they know and might feel weird around me. Like we wanted to keep that secret for a reason. And Chelsea just didn't get it. She didn't get it. And then she kept saying this one thing and it really bothered me because people have been saying this the whole time. And again, that's why I say Amy and Johnny were divinely protected because it didn't seem like they had to say this as much. Like their relationship does seem like, yo, this is just, this is real. Like you can fall in love behind a wall. You can meet people in real life. You can walk into your destiny in this social experiment. Not everybody, but it's possible. Chelsea kept saying, well, love is, you know, marriage is hard. Like it's supposed to be hard work. Like you're supposed to work at it. 
And I just wrote down in my notes, it shouldn't be hard though. It doesn't have to be this way. Why do we equate being in a relationship or being in love with somebody with abuse, with not being happy, with, you know, as long as I'm fighting for this, it makes it valid. Things should be easy. You should have emotional compatibility with your partner. If you're the type of person that likes to keep things private and off camera, and you tell that person, don't say this on camera, and they do, that's not your person. If you're the type of person that has relationships in your life where you have, you know, you have certain realities and that other person finds out and they cuss you out about it, I don't know if that's your person. If you're the type of person that likes to go out and hang out and, 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 and the thing is, is these guys, these people are so young, 27, 28, 30, y'all are young. I didn't stop wanting to go out and socialize and, and, and I can't even say I fully stopped, but I get sleepy so much earlier now. But I was like 38 before I was like, all right, I'm good on this. I'm good. And when I was hanging out around that time in my life, I was meeting people who were in their 50s, 50, 54 one day on a Sunday fun day. I met this woman because I liked her shoes. And she was like, it's my birthday. I said, oh, really, girl? She goes, yeah, I'm 54. And I wish I could show you her picture without invading her privacy because she looked a good 20 years younger, but you know, <laughs> black don't crack. So yeah, I, I just think that if you're the type of person you like to be out, you know that you may not want to be with somebody who, I mean, it's not, it's okay to have opposites that attract, but somebody that's going to completely freak out, that's not your person. It's okay to let something go when it feels like pushing a boulder uphill. And we've convinced ourselves, and I guess it's, it's that scarcity mindset that can happen to you after you've had your heart broken a couple times, but we've convinced ourselves that to have something, it has to be hard, and it's just not the way it is. And until you're around people and their chemistry makes sense, the way they treat each other makes sense, they just fall in line, they have a very synergistic connection, until you're around that, you might be operating in that false belief. I know I did for a long time. I was like, you know, hey, if I want a man, I have to struggle and spit and cry and kick the wall and roll on the ground and throw dirt in my face. And then you're around somebody and her and her partner and him and his partner, they just laugh. <laughs> they just have the best time loving on each other. And you're like, okay, if I can't get it that way, then I don't want it. If it's not something that flows freely, if it's not something that feels organic, if it doesn't feel easy, especially that early on in the situation, my God, then it's, it's cool. It's, we're good. And I want to say this, I'm not saying friction doesn't arise, but the kind of friction they were running into me personally, personally me, I don't think it's healthy. Okay. So I don't blame him for saying, I'm not going to marry you. Do I think he's a jackass for asking her first and then being like, well, huh, that's nice. Cause I'm not going to the altar. Absolutely. But I respect him for not pulling a clay and for breaking up with her before he let her walk down that aisle. Cause to me, that's unforgivable. Let's go ahead and talk about that wedding. So let's do the easy part first. I've already given you my impression of Amy um, and that stands. Everything from the way that she, uh, her family came together, the way that they had her relatives who've passed on, his relative who had passed on, they're, they're framed next to the, the front of the aisle, the way that his brother-in-law or his soon-to-be brother-in-law married them, the way that she had one of her soon-to-be sisters-in-laws in her wedding, like everything came together so seamlessly. Once again, I had to ask, you know, forget what prayer Amy prayed, what prayer did her parents pray and what did they do in life that God was listening that intently? Because that is, that's a special situation. That girl is protected. That was beautiful to see all of that come together. Um, and that's all I got to say about Amy. Let's talk about AD. So from the beginning, I could tell that Clay was not going to do this. And already I knew it wasn't going to happen because of social media. And I do want to go ahead and interject here and just say, I apologize again for spoiling last season the way that I did. Um, I purposefully with this season because I actually liked it. Last season, I was like, I hate this. I hate everybody, whatever. I'll just, just tell me everything. But this season, because I was kind of invested, I did not want to hear any love is blind talk until I got to watch the episodes. Literally 20 minutes after 
the wedding episodes aired, people were making posts talking about the wedding. We're talking about what Clay did, what Clay didn't do. And I was like, I want your account taken down. I want to report you for community guidelines violations. Cut it out. So once again, I wanna apologize um, if I spoiled anything for y'all back in the day, uh, because I was ready, like I said, to go ahead and have these people's accounts banned from uh, the TikTok platform. But I knew going in that Clay most likely did not say yes. Um, I could tell from the things he was saying that he most likely was not gonna say yes. Just the, he kept, he was talking so much because he was trying to convince himself. And the meeting that he had with his father did not help, did not help at all. Uh, Clay's father, it, Clay's father is in deep denial about how much he has actually hurt his son. He's either in denial about it or he doesn't think it's a big deal. And hopefully after what happened on this show, he realizes that his actions and the way that he treated Clay's mother really, really affected his son. And if he doesn't realize it himself, the conversation that he had with, with uh, his ex-wife, Clay's mom at the end, I hope that that opened his eyes. And I'm gonna talk about that conversation in a second. Clay speaking to his father was, was so enlightening. Um, as far as what their relationship is. When, when he said, this is the most my dad's ever talked to me. What? Y'all have been watching each other so closely. You've been watching his actions so closely, but you never really had an emotional relationship. So that big question that you need answered, which is why wasn't love enough to keep you from cheating? And can I trust my own heart if I feel love? Am I gonna be like you? Did you ever love my mom? Like those are three really simple questions that he been needed answered. And the fact that he showed up to do this show without those questions answered is just, it's an incredible shortfall on him. But his dad, mm, his dad has done his son an extreme disservice. And I hope he recognizes it now. And so I feel like the nervousness Clay was already experiencing, plus talking to his dad, it didn't really do a whole lot for him. All his dad did was instill in him this idea that he's an athlete and a champion and he needs to see things through to the end. So he's not gonna quit before he gets to the altar because that's not what winners do. And I think, I remember you know, a couple of seasons ago when Marshall said, I would have at least liked to got to the end. I wanted to finish the assignment. I think a lot of people who, are high achievers, um, they wanna play the game, they wanna get all the way to the end. Even if they know they're gonna say no, they're still gonna play it as long as they can play it. And so when Clay did turn AD down, I remember him saying, well, it was a game time decision. Everything is about sports, it's about games, it's about being an athlete, being a champion. And I don't think he really ever was coming from his heart. I don't think he ever felt, and he admitted it. He said, I had all these questions, and I'm not deeply in love, so I'm not gonna get married. And I just wish he had done what Jimmy Johnny did and let her know that before because AD was on a completely different side of, of, of thinking and of rationale, um, coming from that very emotional center that women tend to come from a lot where men are coming from somewhere else, which is always so frustrating. I wanna say this about AD. AD really highlighted to me and I think we tend to forget this a lot of times in society, but AD really highlighted for me how important just being a wife is um, to a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. I am a little bit older now and I am done with my 30s officially. Um, it's been about a week, but I think I let go of the idea or the concept of being a wife like putting it up on a pedestal when I was super young uh, because the relationship thing was hard. And so I was just like, yeah, I don't think that marriage is something that I'm, I was never obsessed with having like a big rock on my finger. I was never obsessed with, you know, seeing myself in a white dress, walking down an aisle. I was never obsessed with calling myself, you know, I these girls get engaged, they're like, I'm a fiance, check out my rock girl, you know, whatever. Um, AD, when she saw herself in the wedding dress and she broke down, you know, I can't believe I'm here, I'm here, I'm, I get to be a wife, I'm a fiance. That was never something, I was more excited about being a mom, 100%. And I know for a lot of people that doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's how my brain was. Being a wife, being in a marriage, 
again, because relationships had always been so far away from me, I just, I never put it up on a pedestal. And I feel like AD, you know, in that last episode, she tells Clay, I feel like I was a sacrifice for your own learning, but I feel like she sacrificed herself so that she could achieve this idol that so many people have. I want to be a wife. So just like Chelsea, I'm gonna suffer. I'm gonna let this man, you know, tell me to my face several times that he thinks he'll cheat. He's not sure. He was so nervous when they went to the Dominican Republic. He's staring off into space. He's having these conversations. I don't wanna let you down. She could have cut him in, but she was like, no, I'm gonna see this through. I'm going to achieve that goal. That's what's important. I, I want to be in that position. I wanna be able to call myself by that name. So I don't think she, she can't blame Clay for embarrassing her. You did this to yourself. You were so excited about being in this position that you didn't think about what it was gonna cost you and how it was gonna, and, and what it was gonna take from you in the end. Now, again, like I said, from the uh, preview and from what people have found online, Clay and AD are still very much together. That's what people are saying. So she all right. But woo, it was painful to watch that. And actually, the last episode aired on my birthday. And so I woke up that morning and I was already all kinds of discombobulated for other reasons, but I started, you know, my birthday off just in tears because when that girl walked down the aisle alone, alone, her mama couldn't walk her down, a friend alone. Hey, you know, as much as Jimmy Johnny loved her in that blue dress down in the Bahamas or whatever they were, I might've had him walk me down. Could nobody walk her down? I felt so, you know what I felt for her? I'm gonna say this. There are those of us out there who we are used to having to do things by ourselves. And so we don't even realize when we have, when we're operating out of a sense of hyper independence to the point of getting ourselves in situations where nobody has our back. Does that make sense? I feel like AD joined with Clay or she was willing to work things out with Clay despite him not having her back, despite him not really being there to support her because she's used to having to be hyper independent. She's used to having to be the first. She's used to having to, I think she said she's the oldest of seven or the first of seven siblings to get married or something. There's gotta be a story there with just this idea of, Yes, I might be a woman. Yes, I might be you know, a very feminine presenting woman, but I've had to do things by myself. So I can walk by the aisle alone to this man that has already told me, hey, I don't know if I'm fully in this with you. And she kept telling him the whole time, well, I've got your back. I'll lift us up. I'll do. The biggest gift, I think, for those of us out there who have to be hyper independent because we have not met that person who we feel like has our back is when you're finally in that situation, where they got your, where you don't, you're not alone. And so I feel like her walking down the aisle to this person who was about to let her down whew, was so indicative of the hyper independence that's probably ruled her life. You can't even see that you are marching yourself to your own grave. Uh, yet another situation where you're about to be buried by your own expectations, failed or faulty expectations, your own. She did it to herself. <laughs> like as much as I want to be mad at Clay for letting her down, she did it to herself. So we all know she walks down the aisle. A lot of people were really upset at um, the fact that he said, okay, body, when he saw her, which again, I mean, I didn't like her dress. I didn't, you know, it, her body is a masterpiece. Um, but the fact that that's what he said to me, it showed that that's the part of his brain he has her in compared to when people cry or they're like, you know, you look so beautiful. Isn't that what you'd want to hear? Right? I remember at, um, at a, what was it? A Prince Harry and Meghan's wedding. There was a part where he saw her and um, somebody asked him like, what were you thinking? You know? And he just said, you know, he kept telling her, you know, you look so beautiful, you look so beautiful. But he said, in my head, I was thinking, look what I get, look at my prize. So I think all of us cringed a little bit when Clay was basically just like, hello, sex object. Okay, sex object. Hello, sex. Yes. 
Because that's not how you want your husband to look at you. I don't care how much of a masterpiece your body is, right? So she goes and he gives us more of that damn speech of his about trusting your heart and you can't give up and AD a bit of, boy, shut up. And then of course we know she says yes first and then he tells her no. And I love this part because when she turns to the side to her, now listen, she walked down there alone, but that's because she's a leader. That's because she's a champion. That's part of being hyper independent. You've been called on to be the leader and a lot of times you have to stand by yourself, but you're not alone. Because when she, when that man acted like that, she turned around, she pointed to her mama and everybody stood up and walked out behind her. And I, you know, I'm, I'm in tears, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, because what a queen, right? I mean, let's be for real here. No matter what I say about her, she's still my queen, like a hundred percent. And that, and that being said, get a little tired of y'all talking about the girl's eyelashes, but I also have questions myself about her eyelashes. Um, I used to get on, uh, this here internet and look a fool all the time. And it wasn't until, first of all, I've, I've never had eyelash extensions. Um, I don't think she has eyelash extensions, but I would have done that for the show. Also, I would have, I would have gotten braids if I was her because that leave out. Mm. But uh, this is the brand that I use now. And I just feel like it is a very good, let me zoom in here. I just feel like it's very natural. Like you can still tell that there's a lash on my face. I'm not perfect at applying them, but I used to have lashes that were like flying out on the sides. They were way too heavy. And I just feel like these are really, really nice and normal for every day. And they make a lot of different, you know, lengths, but these naked lashes are, are really great. I wish she'd gotten some better lashes. Cause if I see one more thing piece about her lashes, I just don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, but yeah, so I, she's a queen. Let's, let's not, let's not forget it. And when she walked out and all those people were behind her, it uh, made me feel a little bit better. Although I didn't like the fact that when she was in the room and she was crying and she was saying, you know, I'm not enough, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't like the fact that the babies were there, her nieces. Um, there are gonna be certain realities about being a woman, certain uh, sad things. And I feel like part of your innocence is taken from you the day you realize that even the people you believe in the most and you think are the most beautiful and the most deserving, they get hurt too. And so if they get hurt, what's gonna happen to me? And I, I can only imagine like getting dressed up, telling your nieces, we're gonna be on a TV show, I'm gonna get married, you know, this is gonna be your Uncle Clay. And then he embarrasses them like that. They might think, okay, that's okay for a man to do that to me. I don't know, I wouldn't have invited the babies. They would not have been a part of my day unless I was absolutely sure that he was gonna do that. And uh, yeah, so I wanted them removed immediately. And I felt so much for her when she was saying, I'm not enough, I've never been enough. All I wrote in my notes is felt, <laughs> felt girl, I understand. But when you've never been enough, um, first of all, we all are. It's just a matter of whether or not we are allowed and blessed to find someone who falls in love with us in, in, in all of who we are or whether or not after we can, we seem to not be able to find that. We just have to walk life alone because you should never settle for being loved for only half of what you, of what you are, what you bring to the table. Um, but anyway, uh, I think that, um, she said something else that made me kind of sad when she said, I hate that I wasn't enough to get him right. I think there's this idea that we can only be enough in situations where even if a man is like not showing you any interest at all, you're, you're such a woman, you're, you're so powerful. You know, what do they say? That, that pussy got power, right? That he didn't have it together, but then he met you and you were, you were all he needed. She does say, she says, I hate that I wasn't enough to get him right. That should not be on you. He should come into the situation knowing that, okay, this is what I want. You shouldn't have to lift a finger to pull him into a mental and emotional state to believe that you are enough for him. And I think she thinks that way. I know she thinks that way because there's so much that's pumped into women about how, how divine and how special and how much we can get and take from men. And so when you can't do that, when you can't push somebody into feeling a certain way, when you can't make him fall in love with you, there's this feeling of shame. Why couldn't I do it? Because can't nobody do it. That is a myth. When you, it's, it's just like the Bible says, a man who finds a wife finds a good thing. And I remember a couple years ago, John Gray, 
uh, before he is he a shay? Is he? Do people still listen to him? I don't know. He had a lot of cheating scandals. So but anyway, he did a a sermon where he says, "You are not a wife just because you are a wife when I find you." And I feel like it's this thing of what what he means by that is you're you. Every man's not gonna think you're enough. Everybody's not gonna be you know gonna fall in love. Everybody's not gonna. But when you meet that person, if you are to meet them, let's be real. When you meet that person that was looking for you, you ain't got to convince him of nothing. And I think there's great freedom in saying to yourself, unless I'm dealing with somebody who knows what he has, 100% out of 100, I'm not going to deal with nobody at all. And that's tough. Because again, you put marriage up on that, on that pedestal, right? So yeah, so when she was crying, going through all that, I was like, good Lord, I feel you. I feel you. I would hate for my breakdowns, especially for my early 30s. Oh my God. To be recorded like this. Hell, my breakdowns from last year. Okay. <laughs> but I know what that feels like. And it was just so sad. It was so frustrating when Clay came in that room with more of this. Because he literally says, you know, I, hey, you're doing all this crying. Now it's making me feel. So, so, so her crying, you, the fact that you hurt her isn't enough. It's annoying to you because it's making you feel bad. Get out of here. Get, get, get out of here. Yeah, that was just very icky. It, it left me feeling, I, I like the fact that they gave us that first and then they gave us Johnny and Amy second. Like, thank you. Like, thank you for giving us this story too because that Clay and AD was brutal. But the best part of Clay and AD was the conversation that Clay's parents had. I said to myself, in all of black cinema, there has never been a more therapeutic and real conversation between two people. I said, Tyler Perry wishes that he could write something like this. He wishes. And I say black cinema because their relationship and the way it fell apart is very indicative of a lot of the issues that I see when people complain about black love. And I'll just leave that there. But I love the fact that he said, well, all you gotta do, again, Clay's dad is Delulu. He is in La La Land. He needs to have, I, I hope that that conversation was a come to Jesus moment for him. Cause he's completely unaware of the pain and destruction that he caused and completely refuses to take any kind of accountability for it. But his mom is, oh. And she said to him, oh, he says to her, you've seen it. He says to her, well, all he's gotta do is meet a good woman, right? And then he'll act right. And she said, well, you met a good woman and you weren't good to me. I said, God damn. Because that's another myth, right, that women have that, that surrounds us and surrounds our narrative on this earth. If you were A, B, C, D, you wouldn't be single. If you were A, B, C, D, this type of man would want you. You know, if you did this, this would happen. And a lot of times we live in a world where men completely refuse to take accountability, refuse to take responsibility, and it's just, well, she wasn't enough of a good woman. Well, I did this for her because, no, nah, it's your character the whole time. Good people treat people well, period, period. I love the conversation. And I love how she said, you need to talk to your son because he has so many questions and they need to be answered by only you. And I love that she said, he, when you go through certain things that are in your DNA, you bring them with you. Yes, yes. Absolutely. I love, she was, she's so well spoken. And you know what I've discovered about life? Only people that have really been through have a certain level of wisdom and a certain level of awareness. And it's the way you go through too, right? You don't get to the point that Clay's mom was at by saying to yourself, oh, it wasn't that serious. Oh, I get, you get to that point by marking each part of your emotional journey, each part of your grief. That's the only way to pull as much wisdom from it as she did. Incredibly wise woman. And I love that even after her son did this to this woman, he came off the, the whatever and he went to his mom and she gave him a hug. She said, I still love you. You're still okay. So she's just, a, where is her talk show? She's, she's excellent. Um, that conversation was so healing, so important. And really the best part of anything that happened with Clay and AD, the best part of Clay and AD was bringing his parents together to have that conversation on national television because that's a conversation a lot of people need to have and need to see. To wrap up this very long video, like I said, we already know what's gonna happen, you know, at the reunion with the couples, we know. Um, I have enjoyed this season 
somebody asked me the other day, they said, okay, you're at the end. Would you ever go on a show like this? Uh, and I, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. So I think I've, I think I've aged out of it. And then um, I would never, ever, ever say yes to a marriage. Are you kidding me? A marriage? Absolutely not. I need to be around you. I need to smell your breath. Remember when, uh, I think her name was Taylor, went to the hotel with American flag boy, JP, and she was like, they were in the jacuzzi together and she goes, oh, stinky breath. I probably have it too. Give me a kiss. Bad oral care is enough to make me want to drown myself in the sea. Uh, stinky breath, tartar, plaque on the teeth, crooked teeth. I, I, that's what I cannot do. I will not agree to a marriage until I see that what that mouth talking about. That's, that's me. And then I gotta know, like, don't hit me with no surprises when we get back to the real world, uh, like Izzy and Stacy. I don't wanna know your credit score is seven. I don't wanna know that. I need to know that in the pod. And, and, and I'm, un unfortunately, I'm unable to play cool girl, okay? I would be just as scary as Jessica, if not more so. So I doubt I would even come out with a proposal. And then, and then, social media is just too sleuthy, okay? And I'm not about to have people write 700 think pieces about my braids, my eyelashes, my butt. Yeah, mm -mm. No, nah. so this show and any other reality show is not for me, but I do enjoy watching it. So far, it has been, unfortunately, the messiest, but also I've the most fun, right? I'm looking forward to the reunion. And that is all I have for now, um, as always. Thank you for watching.